Okay, um, letter of Steve Ng to his parents, Sunday night, 30 November, 1958. Dear mother and pop, I returned from Frankfurt this evening at 9.30, came home by taxi cab. The room is now plastered with Soviet banners, etc., and a giant picture of Khrushchev. Schlussel has returned from Prague. Frankfurt was largely destroyed in the war, and of course the rebuilding has been terrific, so it was unpleasantly modern. The Americans have spread over a huge area thereabouts. It could have been Arlington. The PX was quite good, as was the commissary. One girl was elated over spotting Mr. Presley behind the wheel of a jeep when we arrived. The army is everywhere. John's dad is a lieutenant colonel, has been in London, and was very pleasant. He was gruff and cynical, and therefore immediately interesting. Underneath, he proved much fun. And I dislike, and I liked him. His mother was awfully kind and tolerant of us, as mothers must be. His younger brother was pleased that I was interested in his stamps, but I was disappointed to learn that he was a ninth grader. When I remember what a typical freshman was like in London, their home was State Department built, but much of the housing development was army occupied. One of our sophomore counselors lived on the floor above, so we visited him. Thanksgiving dinner was delicious. All the meals there were good. The marked contrast to our usual fare at the officers' club. One day, John and I went down to Darmstadt, a similar housing development with ups, with occasional German houses where he once lived and looked up some of his old friends. We were accompanied by another mutual friend from University of Maryland who was also home. Throughout the entire trip, I could not but compare it with London and the unique arrangement I had last year. In Frankfurt, contact with the Germans or with their culture is nil. Everything is Americanized, yet with all their disadvantages of living abroad. But their teenage club, it could be in Soho, only it's too big. Mirrors around the dance floor, combo for one of the dances, pool, pinball, plushy furniture, etc. The Prague trip must have been something. Everyone has been telling me about it. Steve got by on $9 since he bought check money this side of the Iron Curtain and smuggled it in in his shoe. It was worth $18 once he got in. The Reds allow no money to go in or out. They cheat you entering the country, and as you leave, giving the tourist a decently unfair exchange rate both times, the students had a guide on the bus with them who was usually at a loss to, un to answer the questions put to him. One slip, the bus was encountered by an army convoy bristling with weapons, which they were not supposed to see. Poor timing, the university students were delayed at the border or something. Steve bought a quantity of Russian propaganda, plus some coins. I got a letter from Mrs. Mall requesting material and generally discussing student life. And a card from you, Pop. That is interesting about Mike Mintz. Today coming back, our train stopped three times for unknown reasons. It delayed us sufficiently in Heidelberg to allow some sightseeing time. The town is crowned by a castle which must afford a terrific view. It is mostly in ruins leveled by the French in the Thirty Years' War. The streets are narrowly quaint, cr crowded with inviting antique shops and guest houses, taverns. We lunched in one of the latter and then returned to the situation where we got our train. The trip back was uneventful. I hope that you were able to have a nice Thanksgiving and did something enjoyable together. Or is Ransom still in the USA? In any event, I hope that you had a pleasant holiday. I did. But this week, there is much work to be done. My government term paper needs retyping and French needs attention. Love, Steve. I now, P.S., I now own the 1924 transcript copy of H.P. Lovecraft's The Festival.